I, uh, one of the kind of, I guess, theories I developed last week when I was working on the Wash U talk was something called an idea vortex. So I wanted to share that with, uh, with those of you that weren't, weren't there this weekend. So thank you, first off, for the guys that came. That was, I uh, appreciate it. Uh, so the idea of Vortex is about how do you make sure uh, you don't waste a lot of time doing things that don't matter. So this is very relevant both to entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out what to do with their, with their business, but also it's, it's relevant internally for us when you're thinking entrepreneurially, when you're trying to develop a, a smart solution. And so, you know, kind of, first off, you know, you've got your idea of, you know, you've got your solution down uh, that you're wanting to get to down here. And it would be great if you could just go from your idea to solution, plan it all out, then execute it, and everything is wonderful. The problem is your idea won't work. It's just a fact of the matter is when you're at the beginning stages of trying to develop something, you just don't have enough information on all the different variables to make sure uh, to, to understand what it's going to take to get there. You know, and it kind of comes back to, you remember the, when we did the uh, systems wavelength? You know, and then you, you start kind of getting more and more involved, and you, you figure out more and more of the steps, and then all of a sudden you've got your, your process. Doing this is the equivalent of just writing a box and saying, I can get from here to here every time. You know, and that just, it, Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. So the process to make sure that you can get your idea from, hey, I, I've got this cool idea to, uh, yeah, or even trying to figure out how to go about it, is, is really where the idea of Vortex kind of comes in. And so the first step in that is to observe. And observation comes in a lot of ways, and it's, and it's about experiencing, it's about seeing it, and it's, and it's really about paying attention. Uh, and with, specifically with, uh, with like an entrepreneur, if you're trying to come up with uh, a new idea, it, it, it's really kind of the intersection of, of three things. Purpose, passion, and problems. So right here is kind of the sweet spot of of what you should be looking for, of what you should be observing. You know, and it kind of comes in the same thing when you're looking internally. You know, you've got the purpose, you know, maybe now it's not about trying to figure out what you're inspired by and what you want to, you know, go change the world about. But what's the goal? You know, when you're trying to come up with uh, a new solution, what, what, are you trying to, what are you trying to accomplish? Passion, and in this instance, in an entrepreneur's case, what are the things that just get your juices flowing? What are the things that you would do for free if, you know, if, uh, if you had to, uh, with solving a problem, what are you really good at? What do you enjoy doing? You know, so what are the things, you know, internally that you really, really enjoy doing that you're really good at? And problems, what is the, what's the real problem that we're trying to solve? You know, what is the, the pinch point? What is the thing that, that's trying to get fixed? You know, with an entrepreneur, the intersection of, of these things you know, if you focus on what really drives you to be you, what is the things that, you, that you're really excited about, and what are the things that really frustrate you or bother you, if you can find that sweet spot in the middle here, that's where you're going to have real, real success. You know, and internally, it's about trying to find, you know, when you're observing the situation, where, where can you be of best use? It's also in that intersection. So once you observe, you know, potentially what, uh, what a problem is, what you're good at doing, then, then you want to engage the problem. You want to get involved. You know, there's, there's an element that, you know, with a lot of the pitch competitions and the other things that we see, a lot of it's experience, you know, what experience you have in the, in the, in the arena. You know, so when people come and say, hey, I want to start a restaurant, I've got this great idea, and then you start asking about it, and like, well, have you ever run a restaurant? Well, no. Do you even know how to cook? Well, no, but I, but I really like restaurants and I know what I like. Okay, well get out there and, and be a manager of a restaurant. Get your hands dirty, you know, go to chef school, learn the things you gotta do. When it comes to internally, engage the problem. So, you know, one example, you know, we had the hosting meeting last week. 
So we observed the fact that it wasn't working well, right? You know, it, it's, it's very dense and it's hard to navigate. And when we engaged, the fact when we had to do all the website updates, we found out what did and didn't work. And then we figured out, well, it'd be cool to have this. And it actually would be nice to have that. And so we, when we got in there and we started doing some website updates, we figured out the spreadsheet really wasn't working. So then we, we learned some different ways to do it. So get in there, get your hands dirty, and, and try to, to really look at the problem from a lot of different situations. And after you've engaged with it, then you wanna, then you wanna share. So this is where you wanna to really talk about what are some potential solutions. So you wanna, uh, in, in the case of a business, once you've, you've figured out your purpose, your, your passion, and your problems, you've engaged and you've kind of gone out there and you've messed with it, you've tried it out, you've worked with it, you've got some experience, start talking to people. You know, one of the things that we talked about on Friday was stealth mode is bullshit. Like if, you, or if your idea is so fantastic and so great that you can't talk to anybody without an NDA, then someone else is gonna do it already. Like there's probably already people doing it if it's that great. Talk with people because then what ends up happening is you know back to the the, the area of the 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 wavelength for systems. You may see a blind spot that other people be like, okay, this is how you can fix this problem right here. So they're going to look at it from a lot of different perspective and a lot of different situations. So you're going to be able to to get a lot of different great information. And and what ends up happening is the more people you talk through it with, the more people you share it with, the more likely you're you're going to be able to. Uh, you get the more iterations, you know, it's like anything that you practice, the more repetitions you get in, the more successful you're going to be and the, the more you're going to look for those little pinch points. So talk through the problem with, with other people. You know, so for our hosting spreadsheet, this was our meeting last week. You know, so we, we talked about it, we and then we started talking about potential solutions. We talked about, uh, you know, what way we could go about it. Uh, and we just started asking a lot of questions and, and getting it framed in, in the right instance. And after you've talked with lots of people, at that point, you want to focus on uh, taking a second to, to reflect on, on what was talked about. Because if you go headlong, straight from talking with people, all the way into to just making things happen, you might miss a lot of things. Because at, in, in this instance, a lot of times, this, this is almost going to be its own mini cycle here. Because Every time you talk with somebody, you need to then take a second to reflect about what they said, how you can uh, tweak your, the way that you're going to share it next time, and then kind of go from there. Because what you're going to then be able to do is apply that knowledge that you got from that person uh, into your overarching idea, and then put that into your next sharing presentation and be able to do that. What, where this reflected with the domain spreadsheet was, you know, we, we started, had an idea of what we could do, uh, thought about it, came back, uh, talked with, with Brian and Dennis and, and then Kale and Ben about it, and then we tweaked it, and then we talked about it, and then we talked about the idea a little bit more, thought about it, and then we tweaked it again, and really allowed us to refine how much time is going to be spent in developing this solution, as opposed to just going from idea to solution. And really what this comes back to is, you know, it's... The right question is more important, so it's greater than a good answer or even a great answer to the wrong question. Does that make sense? So when we were in this cycle right here, what we kept focusing on was what is the right question? What are, we, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish? Because it doesn't matter if you have a good or even a great answer if it doesn't solve the right problem. And what is the thing that we've talked about before? How do you figure out what's the right question? Five whys. Exactly. The five whys. Because a lot of times the surface level problem or the surface level, uh, the obvious answer might not be the right question. So you might be solving the wrong problem. 
You know, it's kind of one of those, you know, you find the, the story about people climbing the ladder only to get to the top and figure out that it was up against the wrong tree. You know, so this is really about figuring out what is the right question. So that comes through asking, okay, why does that matter? All right, well, why does that matter? Well, is that really what's going on here? And, and really diving into that, that fundamental reason and that fundamental cause of, of the problem. So with the, the domain spreadsheet, you know, we started, when we first started, the idea was to have individual tabs for every single customer, which meant we were gonna have to put in, what, 30, 40 hours of, of data reorganization. But then when we started asking questions, we figured out that really wasn't necessary because that's not what we were after. What we need is just to make sure that developers get the information that they need, social media gets the, the information they need, hosting has the information they need. So we figured out that we really needed to categorize things in a, in a different way, which allowed us to come up with a different solution. So we had a great answer of individually having customers in their own tabs, but it was to the wrong question. The right question was, what, how do we want to use this information? And that's where we were able to come up with a much better and much different solution. So after you figure out what's the right question, and you've talked about it, and you've shared it, and you've thought about it, and you've shared it, and you've come up with, you think, a decent solution, then at that point, you've got to test it. Yeah, so once again, it, once you get to hear the easy thing to do, and what's, what you always want to do, is go once again from idea, now, so now you've got a good idea, and so you, you want to go straight down to solution again. But what ends up happening with that? You know, we've talked about that uh, long, long before with small batch stuff, right? So what, what was the term that we used for this area? Remember that, what was it called? Work in progress. So the more work in progress you have, the more you have to redo if something, if this solution all of a sudden shifts to here, and you're here, now you've got to redo everything. So when, when it comes to good testing, it, it comes down to what's the minimal viable product. You know, you guys have probably heard that, you guys have heard that a lot. So the minimal viable product is what is the least amount of work you can do to really get a, a taste of, really get a flavor of, if this solution is going to work. You know, so with an entrepreneur, they're down here share reflecting. So a lot of this is setting up meetings and doing uh, pitch competitions and those things, then getting feedback, redoing it, and going all the way through. Then when they go to their minimal viable product, what's the, the least amount they can do and still get a, a good test of what the business is? So at WP Go Host, you know, we launched the website, we talked about it a lot, we launched the website, and we're trying to sign up beta users now. And so a lot of what we want WP Gogos to be is out there in the distance, but we haven't really developed that solution yet because we want to test and make sure that there's even a need for it and that customers will pay for it. So we did the absolute least amount of work. So we set up the back end and we've got the, the way to get it set up, but a lot of the things that eventually will be automated now are going to be manually operated. So with the business, this is just getting something going and, and getting people to try to pay you to do what you do. For us, you know, when you're testing a new idea, so with the uh, domain spreadsheet, what we're going to be doing is setting up um, one small little section of, of how we're going to do it, and we're going to do it for only a handful of customers with only a handful of the, the criteria, just to see if the way it's set up, we think it will work. And so, once you test it, then what? Then you have to observe the results, right? You know, it does no good to test things if you don't observe the results. And so then, what ends up happening then is you go through the whole cycle once again. You observe, you engage, you share, you reflect, you share, you reflect, you test, you observe. And what ends up going on then is you start really wide, but then over time, that, so that kind of, that vortex, each time you do it is going to get a little more refined, a little more refined, until you you're down here and you and you then you get to your solution. As opposed to your idea and solution. 
So what ends up happening is this is a much easier way of doing it. But the odds of success are also much, much lower. When you go through the idea of vortex, you're really focusing on adapting and growing as you go. And it takes a lot longer, but the odds of success are much higher. And so here, we're talking much higher level of effectiveness. Here, if you get it right the first time, OK, that's a little more higher on efficiency. But what happens if you're wrong? You got to start back over, and you've wasted all of this time. And you can't hardly learn from that, because you don't even know where it went wrong. It could have went wrong here. It could have went wrong here. It could have went wrong there. So, but now you have to start over. So then now you're really inefficient. Whereas here, you're only putting effort and you're only putting energy behind things that are going to help you get closer to your end goal and your end result. Where else have you guys seen this in your own uh, ways of, of things and uh, projects that you're working on? How else have you engaged this type of process and when has it worked and when, and when have you done this and it hasn't worked? So with, uh, with like doing responsive websites, um, didn't really have any idea uh, how those worked. Uh, but basically, um, we knew that we wanted to do one for somebody. And so we kind of did a little bit of engaging like, and observing, like looking up you know, what other people do for them. And uh, then like as far as sharing goes, like bouncing ideas off of Ben for development, and then looking back and saying, well, there might be a better way to do that. And then kind of like finally just getting a final product that uh, is probably as close to perfect. It's probably not the minimum viable product. But it, you know, it's just it, we did go through a process mm -hmm. of figuring it out. It was kind of a circle. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an awesome point. Because the observation was you saw them out there. And you're like, that's something that could be cool for us to do. You engage it by kind of fiddling with it, playing with it, trying it out. Uh, talked with it with the team, and then started thinking about it, talking, thinking about it, talking. And where you guys did test it was we didn't then start doing it on every site. The, so the test was try it on one client. And when it works there, and you guys figured out, you know, then you watched what worked, what didn't work. Then you started changing and talking about it, and then the next one you did much more efficiently. And then now you're doing two sites that are uh, responsive. And then before long, that's going to be most of our sites because of, of the solution that it gets to of you know, being able to do uh, web and mobile all together. So that's a good point. What else? Uh, it's also whenever we, whenever we roll out a new product, but uh, specifically in my recent experience, the whole idea of the content, like we had an idea, and so we gave it a name and a description and had Brandon sell it. And then we used that experience to find out what needed to be ironed out. And I mean, we're still mm -hmm. running big circles, but they were so much smaller than they were originally. And that's with pricing, that's with how we're offering things, that's with how we do things in the day to day. So there's a million little vortexes in every aspect of it. Yeah. But we do that with every product we roll out. Like, with our pricing structure with big websites like we just talked about earlier today. The things that we were doing a year ago are ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, this is really an approach that we take in all of our product lines. <coughs> Every time we roll out a new product, essentially, you know, the, the testing component is we try it with one, then we try it with two, then we try it with four, then five, and then it becomes everything. You know, with Mavenlink, when we rolled out Mavenlink, we tried it with one client then two, then three. And, and so each time that we go through the cycle, we're still going through cycles of, of how can we figure out how to do it better. You know, we talk about it with uh, the other coworkers and figure out how can we do it better, how can we do it better. Then we try it out once, and then we roll it out, and then we keep going down until we you know, are making fine-tuned tweaks as opposed to you know, massive changes. So it seems to me that most entrepreneurs are Maybe I'm wrong, but they sort of instinctively can do the idea of vortex. Maybe not, but I just think if I have an issue or a problem, I'm horrible at keeping track of my mail. 
when my mail comes through the door at my house, it piles up, right? And I hate it. And I, sometimes I don't know what to do about it, but then I go, you know what? Maybe I should reorganize this somehow. And so I might try something, and if it works, great. So like a week later, my video, ah, this didn't work very well, because I still have eight piles now, so I'm one big one. So I think like I'm just constantly going through that idea of vortex. But I don't think I understand the side is just a straight line. Like, give me an example of a time where it's the non-idea vortex side yeah. of things. So, in this instance, so maiden link. Instead of trying it, tweaking it, trying it, tweaking it, we roll it out to every project for every client. We do a massive sweeping change uh, over the course of one day. And then we figured out our workflow really needs to be tweaked quite a bit to, to kind of jive with, with our project management software. But because we didn't tweak and repeat, we just went from zero to 100. Now we have everything just falling apart. You know, the, that's where that comes in is that you don't really uh, take time to figure out what's the best way to do it. You think about it and you're like, I got this. And then you do it without kind of thinking through it and analyzing it and trying it a little bit and then kind of going back through it. So it's really uh, the goal of what you want to get to is the same down at the bottom, right? right. But one is uh, taking the time to really reflect it and kind of being able to adjust as things change. Where the other one is, it's, it's a Hail Mary, Hail Mary all in, it's either going to completely work or completely fail. Does that make sense? Yeah.